Let's talk Instagram video. Today you'll look at how to transform a wide screenshot video into a square video format, resulting in a better viewing experience on Instagram. Check out this cool finished video. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Tip number one, editing to adapt a widescreen video for use as a square video. As you can see here, I have a clip that I've already put on here. It's a widescreen clip. I just pulled it over from um, the media bin over here and laid it onto the, the center of the square video. This is 1080 by 1080. And that's what I ultimately want is a footprint that size so that I can up upload into Instagram. But um, my clip is a little too long. I know I have a maximum of a minute, but I have all this preamble in the front and I want to cut some of that out. I want to get closer in on the bird. And although this is widescreen, you can see it fly off and it has a beautiful trajectory across the pond. But I, again, want to fill the canvas. So I did some additional editing. And that's what I want you to keep in mind that when you, you, you can take a clip like this that's widescreen and then adapt it for square, square video. And here I'm going to play it now and you can kind of see what I did. So I'm just telling you right at the start, I already uh, cut a piece out front to, to get closer in. And then you're going to see here I do a... Uh, bit of like a zoom in here and then as the bird goes to take off I follow him and you can see he's much fuller in the screen and it has a whole different feel and yet the canvas is using the full I'm using the full canvas to to um, for output into into the the 1080p by 1080p but I want to show you that I added these like I said uh, I, I did a cut, so I cut a bit out of the front. You can see this clip is much shorter than the, the first one that's all the widescreen. And then right here, I, I did a, um, uh, a zoom in. So if we come into animations, you can see the perspective right now. I zoomed in right into where the bird is there. And then um, you can see uh, it's, it's closer in. And then right when the bird's about ready to tape up, take off, I put in um, a custom animation that as you can see, takes the widescreen video. And as I go forward all the way out to the end in keyframe, the, the video shifts from the right side over to the left side. And you can see that and I'll just drag and scrub. So you can see I went from there in close and it goes all the way across as, as I'm panning. So, and again, it's all in that nice square video. And that's just showing you that you can do some creative things, fix the alignment to be what you, what you want it to be in your end product and I filled out the square and you know it, it looks it looks really cool when you when you fill up the screen and let's just play that little sequ last part sequence again see that how big the bird is in there and as compared to when we looked at the widescreen it was much smaller tip number two is to integrate text or captions to help the you the viewer follow along so as you can see here i got another widescreen sequence that as it goes i have i put some text in the top and the bottom and i go it's time for a dip in the pool and as you can see they they marched from the grass on the other side of the path down here and they jump into the pool but again this is using widescreen and so the text helps to give you an understanding but i took this all to another level to fulfill it and execute it under square video and let me just show you what we did here it's because you're going to see the text in here and and some edits as well so let me play so now you can see we're much closer in and we're starting to follow the birds as they're going along. I have a little animation here that's now follow, you know, following them to the path and then sort of giving a little more speed to the motion. 
and then they go, I, I cut out a piece and went under the the uh, railing and th then there's there's uh, the text on against uh, on a white opaque background with opacity at 50 percent and uh, you can see here this last animation that I added in down here in the bottom right sort of brought the, the image back a little bit to the left. So now let's just look at the animations to appreciate the flow. Okay, so the first animation here, if we look, I'm going to uh, zoom out a little. You can see that where it starts, I have the, the screen full and the, here's the, the widescreen video clip. And then as we go through, it slides from the right to the left again to help move along the flow of uh, all the geese there in the path. And then I, I did a cut so that we jumped to under the railing. And then in the last animation here where it starts, you're going to see now if you that um, the the widescreen part of the video is all the way over onto the left hand side and because what i wanted to do is as the birds jumped into the water i wanted the the clip to move more to the right to show the birds that focus on the birds that were left that didn't jump into the pool yet so again i was in full control with an intention of what i visually wanted to achieve and i added text so again you know there's lots you can do tip number three is to put in a cover image at the start of your video that's just about a second long so that when you go to upload the video into Instagram the frames that it chooses at the beginning of your video will include a nice cover because that's where you're selecting a cover option from so here's my um, 16 by 9 or widescreen thumbnail footprint that was used for my YouTube video in this instance and then I created a new image that that was this thing that I brought into my Instagram promo video version that I I'm doing related to the YouTube video as you can see here it, it's in here in the video and it lasts about a second long and to see the end result we just jump over to Instagram here and you can see that all these covers of my my uh, YouTube promo videos um, all have these nice um, covers and those covers were based on having that image in the first second tip number four relates to the fact that you can maximum output with a 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. Here in this release of Camtasia, the production is at 30 frames per second, and we've already seen that. I've mentioned that I've done in my project settings 1080p, 1080 by 1080. So this is perfect. So if you were to actually work with clips that were high, you know, bigger than 1080p, no matter what, um, Instagram will kind of downsize what what you put in to be to be maximum a, a 1080p size so that's just something to be aware of in case you go to use larger resolution video clips for uploading into instagram tip number five preserve upload quality i use cloud services like google drive and dropbox in order to store video files and, and other assets and backups as well but the reason why this is important when I'm doing something like an Instagram video upload is because once I've rendered my video, for me in this case it's inside Camtasia, I need to get it from my desktop into or onto my Android phone in, in the gallery so that I can then use the Instagram app and upload it. And what I do is I will load my video file into Google Drive and then I will download it from there onto my Android phone. And the reason why I'm talking about preserving is because by using facilities like this, you don't risk any data compression or loss because there's something at play that may impact the size of your video file and then cause its quality to degrade. In the iOS environment, to help preserve the quality for upload, use something like Apple AirDrop. So if, for example, if you rendered your file and it's sitting on your Macintosh and you want to move it onto your iPhone or to an iPad, you can use AirDrop to facilitate that. You can also use something like Google Drive, like I just mentioned in the, in the last example for the, the Android users. And then you'll want to download it into your library where you'll then from there upload into Instagram. Wow. Transforming wide screenshot video into square video sure allows for some creative editing.
To see more cool social video related tips, check out my social media video playlist by clicking the link on this page or in the video description below. And be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so you can get more videos to learn about video editing, video marketing, and YouTube. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.